uh, balance patch hit. It's already live. I've already patched it. I'm going to play Hero League momentarily. Uh, and we'll uh, have these changes already. This is the variant of pa balance patch changes that are mostly just numbers tuning. But just a quick sneak peek. Are there any bu bug fixes? A few. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, as usual, I always make a small prediction what I think is going to be happening. Uh, buff or nerf. Um, Alarak, I would say buff. Illidan, I expect a birth. Buff and nerf. Uh, Kerrigan, I would say buff. Thrall, buff. Butcher, I've actually already heard a little bit about them. It's kind of like a nerf. Uh, Zul'jin, I would say probably buff. Zul, maybe a change. Um, Zagara, I would say a nerf, actually. Ariel, I've already seen it, so I know it's both a buff and a nerf. Uh, Lucia, I would say buff. Tassadar, I hope nerf. Taronda, I would say a birth, nerf and buff. Her spell shield stacking is a little bit too good, but two of her level 1 talents are not so good. The Owl and the Hunter's Mark. So maybe a little bit of rebalancing. Uther, I expect a nerf, and I saw a little bit about it with the armor. Uh, Chen, I would expect um, maybe a buff for the common populace, but a nerf for the pros. And Garrosh, I expect a buff, because although he's actually, in my opinion, very good, he's got a low win rate. Aladark. Damage buff increase for negatively charged from 3 to 5%. And that's per something, I believe. Let me just look up Alarak quickly. Uh, Alarak, right now, negatively charged, reads each hero hit by the center of Lightning Surge oh, permanently good. increases the damage bonus by 5%. And there's also a baseline damage bonus increase. Okay, so that's pretty big. That's pretty good. Uh, Blade of the High Lord, which is his auto attack sadism interaction, which reads basic attacks against heroes increase sadism by 7% for 4 seconds, stacking up to 35%. 7, 14, 28, 35. Yeah, 5 stacks. And what was it? It was 6. To 30 so it goes up a little bit as well small other buffs okay two two talents that don't get taken often but nonetheless a little bit of extra power to him the hunt cooldown increased uh good change i would say the cooldown is 60 seconds and because of his trait he's able to use it far too often even very silly just as a damage poke you see at competitive and on hero league illidan's the hunting in on a target, immediately sweeping, striking out, and saying like, whatever, I don't care. I'm going to go to my lane. I'm going to auto-attack minions. And in 30 seconds, I'll see you again. I'll hate you again. Good change. He was too good as a global. He's already good enough in his fighting niche. He didn't also need to be that good globally. I'll bet he didn't see that coming. <laughs> good. Kerrigan. Uh, damage reduced, 18 off. So what's that, 4%? Impaling blades, 10 damage up, which is like, what? 3.4% 3, 3 or what? Primal Grasp up 4 damage, which is about 3.5%, something like that. Overall, this would constitute a small buff, particularly to the combo. Uh, and also, there are no Q damage buff talents, but there is a W damage buff talent, so I guess that's quite nice that it goes on a higher base amount. Overall, a tiny uh, buff, but not an unmitigated buff. It has a small nerf as well. And then it removes two talents that no one in their right mind should ever take. Uh, nothing new is given in return. Uh, this was by far the worst level one. This one did have the false start, let's fly together shenanigans. Uh, it allows you to queue on an ally and you fly together. Uh, which will no longer be possible. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was an okay talent, but I would say it was not the best. The Butcher! Five less basic attack damage. He gets only 20 meat per hero kill instead of 25 and will lose more when he dies. 
So all nerfs, he was too good in quick match and this will help with that a little bit. Before he could suicide, get a kill and it was still mostly worth it even if he died. Especially if there's like two kills and he dies and an ally. He gets so much meat if he was able to pick it up. You had butchers completing quests in four, five, six or seven minutes. Even though pros before in Hero League would complete it in between eight to ten minutes. The best would be six. Now you had just anyone and their grandmother completing at six minutes sometimes. Uh, so I would say that's probably fair. Removed bonus healing for Insatiable Blade. It was like from 100 to 125% heal. And then also bonus movement speed 20%. And now it's 25. So it's only the movement speed now, not the bonus heal. Pity. But mobility does matter, so... Fair enough, I guess. Vittles almost never got picked. This was the go-to, and this makes it a little bit better. I like that, because I'm a fan of Vittles. It's a minion stack. Like, uh, continue to drop meat even if you don't need it, and you get uh, one meat per minion, and you get uh, healing. That's quite a lot of heal. Useful. Crippling Slam well, is nice for the full Q build, but you give up a lot of what Butcher is about uh, with the full Q build. And uh, Crippling Slam... Yeah... Does that make it worth it? Crippling Slam. Slow no longer fades out. And the duration is increased by 30% from 25. So how much extra is that? It lasts for 2 seconds. So 2.6 instead of 2.5. Okay. Enraged. Only 15 armor. Also the best talent. And less armor. May his enemies rest in fewer peace. <laughs> Quality developer comments. Uh, yeah, Butcher nerfs for the most part. Like, yeah, his, all his popular talents got nerfed. Mana cost reduction. Five. Crash lightning from 10 to 12. So he gets 40 stacks, so it was 400 bonus damage. This talent, like I said yesterday on stream, underperforms compared to Echo of the Elements. Uh, two, two stacks of Chain Lightning is better than one that hits for about you know, twice as hard, because that one was infinite easier to complete. So now you can have up to 480 bonus damage. That means instead of like 200, ah, 400 on the first target in the mid game, and if you complete it 600 on the next, it's 400. And 680 on the next and the next. That does make it a bit more of a significant talent. And I might just want to try it out some more. Mana return per attack increased. But I still don't like it. This one is the 30% bonus range. Uh, no second charge. And you need to auto attack chain lightning to minions. Which is a little bit weird. Uh, the fact that you get the bonus range. But you need to get... The auto attacks on it to get your mana back. I wish instead there was a mana return on the echo of the elements because you get two stacks of chain lightning uh, instead of having their low mana cost attached to it as part of the quest. Make that one auto attack because it's a short range CL and make this one a long range cheap mana. Po I mean, I don't know. There's a bit of anti synergy in how it works. It's a cool talent, but I expect everyone will want the other two. Uh, it's still good that it gets a buff because it was the worst. Crush Lightning though, very fascinating. Want to try it out. Mana Tide Trait. Uh, I would say all of his level 4s were really good. Mana Tide, the easiest to use and the easiest to manage your mana. And you get the CDR on all your basic abilities every time you proc your trait. I like it. Um, and it got nerfed again, just like its first iteration of it. Thunderstorm was up to 40% slow if you keep queuing the same targets. And also uh, you had the 25% bonus damage on your initial target when you are at max slow. Greetings, friend. Damage from final quest reward now also applies, applies to chain lightning bounces. So it's 25% bonus damage on the first, second and third target. Interesting. Interesting. That's a good change. Zuljin Bone Slicer. Ah, that's a talent that never sees use. 
uh, because he has the you want axe which is best for auto attack um you want axe is the best for auto attack and you have the the w talent is the best for spell build this one is the best for an auto attack Zul'jin that nonetheless doesn't believe he can complete the quest. It's also better early game than you want to axe. So uh, yeah, that's a little buff to an underused, no, not underused, unused talent. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. He needs it. I don't think it will probably change. I don't think you should take it often, but I think there's a 3% fringe situation where you wa might want to take it. Zool! Less skeleton health even. Longer skeletal mage cooldown. I think that's fair. Mm. Less healing. More mana. Less damage. Hmm. Was Zool a problem? I didn't really see Zul being a problem, but okay, I guess he's pretty good in Hero League. Double laning, lots of heal and damage. I don't hate it. I don't hate the changes. I think it's okay, but I don't think he was that much of a problem. Zagara, Mutalisk. Yeah, that's fair. Yesterday, I can't, I, Zagar was nowhere in sight, and there were still three Mutas deep pushing a lane. Nidus and Muta is crazy. Okay, nerf as I predicted, at least. <laughs> Not big, but, I mean, it's a big nerf to Muta. And it won't change it in fights, just less push. Yeah, I think Zul is a pub stomper. I think that it makes sense to, to nerf him a little. Auriel. Hope generation ratio from hitting heroes increased from 40 to 50. Hope generation ratio, bestow hope. So she gets more energy from allies hitting heroes. Uh, she does less damage on her sacred sweep on the outside, but more in the center. Upping the skill ceiling a little. Uh, initial damage reduced from 115 to 58, almost half. No, half. Yeah, half the initial damage. But if you hit it, you get it back. So again, more skill ceiling. I mean, more skill necessity. Resurrect and uh, 20 seconds off in CD. Nice. And no more bursting light, which is really good because this is uh, this is what makes Lunara, Vala. And Gul'dan, so hard to deal with. There, there's, there's no window in a two second window where you can burst through Ariel's. And the other three talents are really interesting for Ariel. His changes are designed to reduce the reliance that Ariel has upon a hyper carry style. To be an effective healer. By increasing the amount of hope that she can generate. But removing bursting light. And its ability to reduce the cooldown of Ray of Heaven. Wait, what? Oh yeah, that's what it's called. Aureol will have more consistent healing output regardless of who is currently bestowing hope. Yeah, I would agree with that. We're also reducing the damage that Aureol does on average by gating it behind getting the most out of her abilities. By reducing the synergy that Aureol has with a single massive source of damage and reducing her damage output, we hope to make her less common in double support team compositions. I think that's fair. And I know people are gonna like the Doom and Gloom, but I don't think it's I don't think it's merited. I think she's still good. Lucio! Whoa! Woo! <laughs> Jackpot! What? That is quite the significant health uh, buff. Jackpot! Move to the... Oh, yeah! Oh, 
So, uh, let's see, how much health buff is that? Ten percent! Woo! Ten percent health extra. That is... Huge! Nice. You can be a little bit more aggressive with that. Harder to kill him as well. Very nice. I like that. It's good. He pretty much doesn't see play right now. I have a friend who plays him uh, a lot and well. But he's the only one I know who plays him. And who mains him. Tess I have a friend. Lol. Uh, Tessadar. I hope for nerfs. One damage less. Good. Less health. Good. Less regen. Good. Buff the talent I never pick. Good. Less Tassadar makes for a better Nexus. Turonda. <coughs> Celestial Attunement removes not just stuns, but also silences. Remember, this is the one that gives a instant cooldown removal. If you hit it on a stun or silence target now as well. Good change. The least useful one so far. Hard to use. Um, yeah, nice. Kaldori resistance. No long... Ah, yes! This was broken. This was so broken. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, Taranda could get up to 60% spell armor or give it to someone uh, with four consecutive heals within a space of, I don't know, like six seconds each. And this could give her 60% spell power permanently. <laughs> Um, and that means that she would be able to solo a lot of people. You have been outmatched. But now it's only 45% spell armor. That's good. And power also lowers the base cooldown of Sentinel by 4 seconds. Uh, and that was 3, wasn't it? Let me check. Oh yeah, I can't check now because I'm already updated. But I believe it was 3. Okay, uh, still not good, uh, because it doesn't do enough damage even with the level 1 quest, even when you hit it a lot. Oh, it was 0? Oh, the base cooldown. Yeah, yeah, it did 4 CDR per hit, but now also the base. Yeah, a lot of scouting, I guess, but the Harsh Moonlight is so good that I don't expect you will often take in power. Uh, remember, Harsh Moonlight is the uh, Shrink Owl, as we call it. <laughs> And this one will only be 25 instead of 30. Ah, uh, slightly bigger shrink owl. Slightly weaker, anyway. Uh, whoa! Yep. 15 armor instead of 25. That's uh, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, Uther, I still see him as top two support, if not top one. He's my top one anyway. Uh, he's not always top one for competitive. Sometimes Ariel was better. Uh, occasionally you might want Rhaegar, but uh, he is my favorite uh, support. And I, th I think he still uh, has it. Still got it. But there are some nerfs. So 15 armor instead of 25, that's a pretty big deal. Makes his uh, synergy with other armored characters a lot weaker. Uh, healing increased, that means holy shock damage is increased as well. Which is kind of nice, I guess. Uh, if you have any, uh, you know, holy shock, uh, possible, you know, possible uh, interactions. I don't know if anyone uh, ever. Hold on, I should have prepared this. Mm. Mm. Ah, yes. So smooth, such production value. Yeah, 
activated my trap card. He's still stunning Uther. <laughs> so, uh, that one is going to be a little bit stronger in the sense that, of course, you're going to have more damage, but uh, you will have less armor. So that's pretty interesting. Holy Radiance, also more healing and damage. Wave of Light, bonus duration to armor buff on quest completion, reduced from one to five, half a second. That's fair, it was too strong. Uh, it's your go-to every time that you don't go Q build. So you get two and a half seconds of armor instead of three seconds. Um, up from the standard two seconds in the default. And a little bit less mana return. Okay, so again, nerfing the strongest talent. I think it's fair. I think this is a little heavy. I would have liked to try out 20, you know, 25 to 20. But he is quite a bit better. And we are, some of us anyway... Uh, ready for a non-double support meta, you would say. Um, so weakening the supports a little uh, would create space for uh, one support meta, I think. A little bit more. Anyway, I think that's a good change. Holy fire, less wave clear. Again, this is super key to double support meta's existence. I explained it last night. It's about the four powers of a support. Uh, how much hero damage do they do? How much wave clear do they have? And, uh, of course, how much actual healing do they do? And utility. And Uther has almost everything. He doesn't rank so highly in hero damage, but he's got good utility with stuns. He's got good healing. And his wave clear was fair as well. So only his hero damage was low. But with 3 out of 4, you can double support. If you have 2 out of 4, generally you can't double support it. Uh, we found that increasing, by increasing the niche of Uther, players could easily build teams with two supports that were incredibly difficult to counter. Thereby could create a slow gameplay trend that could be frustrating to play against. We think it's great to see double support every once in a while, but Uther enabled it too well when paired with almost any other healer. By reducing the armor he grants, getting a little bit more healing throughput, Uther should feel slightly more well-rounded. Cool. Uh, it's not true that just because uh, a, a support gets weaker, you'll need two supports instead. I, kn I know that like you will think that when a support gets weaker, you will need two instead. Because, well, if, if, if I can carry this stone and I can just carry it and now I'm weaker because I'm older, I can't carry it anymore. Now we need two granddads to carry it. So let's get two. No, you'd rather not carry a stone at all and find another vocation in life because why are granddads carrying stones it's like that with supports if they get weaker like if all supports that exist right now got half as weak like half as strong so twice as weak then you would just uh run full damage and just blow people up because there's nothing left to out heal them or you will run tanks and damage more uh moving on from this uh we can't move on fast enough uh chen Maximum health reduction. No more refreshing elixir. Purifying brew has been moved to 20. Cooldown increase from 10. Um, oh, 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 oh. This is... If he gets stunned, he gets a brew reset immediately. From 20 to 7. Cooldown from 10 to 45. I don't know. I don't think I'll use it. But then I won't use Chen anyway, especially if his health get nerfed. Flying leap bonus for damage reduced. So Chen had an 8-0 score at mid-season brawl. He was combined a lot with uh, unkillable comps, uh, usually com combined with Abathur. And it looked like Chen was the most broken hero at the tournament. But we often have a an anomaly at an international tournament. Uh, at mid-season brawl, Abathur went like 15-1. Chen went like 9-0 or something. Now at Western Clash, which Fnatic won again, it was like Medif is 7-0. And someone else did really well. Like, who was it? Was it Zagara or something? Chen did well three months ago. Four months ago, whatever. Now he got nerfed, but he's seen no play at Western Clash and none on the ladder, pretty much. 
so I'm not sure that the nerfs were merited. In fact, I have a feeling there weren't. But I don't really care because I wasn't playing him anyway. I, I used to like him, but, you know, maybe someday again. Definitely if you play well with Chen now, you're going to be that underdog guy. Uh, or girl. Or uh, nondescript. Garrosh. Longer taunt. Two seconds instead of one and a half. That's a buff. Except if it gets you killed, I guess. If they were too silly to keep attacking you and only the taunt made it happen. Thinking. Uh, unrivaled strength. More throw range if you're talented. More damage. Wow. This is already my favorite. Uh, in for the kill. Increased bonus damage from 60 to 70%. This is the wave clear talent. More PvE damage. And if you get a kill or almost a kill from it and you kill it immediately after, you get a reset on your W and your bloodthirst, which gives you it again. Uh, this will make it easier to kill minions with it because oftentimes you just misestimate and also it wasn't significant enough of a damage buff to actually comfortably clear waves with it. I like it. It's a good change. Into the fray no longer costs mana. Wowie clap. Wowie clap. Uh, so Garrus's again, Garrus's win rate is low, so buffs would be merited. But I have a feeling that he's actually really good. But because I like Garrus so much, how many times do you have to tickle an octopus to make it laugh? Tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> I already knew the joke, and of course I read it, and I had to delay my reaction until uh, it read it out. So, it is funny, and I was trying to mimic my initial reaction to it, but I don't think I pulled it off. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> Elysium, thank you very much, man. Wow. Thank you so much. Cool story, bro. All right, uh, but yeah, since I am a Garrosh sympathizer, I'm very happy with these buffs. Um, and you know, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Bug fixes, resurrecting Ariel, uh, resurrecting Uther before Eternal Vanguard expires will no longer prevent him from respawning. Oh. Casting Fend on the target who's near a wall would no longer to make her act like a Dragoon. <laughs> Fixed an issue that prevented fort attacks from slowing Genji's movement and attack speeds if he had dodge stacks remaining. Wowie. Fixed an issue that could cause Gar Karazim to dash to unexpected locations. Oh yeah, he could come to any direction. Tassadar fixed an issue causing some attack speed modifier effects, such as Zul's cursed strikes, to persist indefinitely if the effect expired during <laughs> dimensional shift. Wow. Zul, waiting four or more seconds to activate uh, to attack after activating cursed strikes will no longer cause the ability's visual effects to become out of sync with his attack animations. In the Rhythm talent will now correctly display quest progress on the in-game score screen's talents tab. And emojis sending an embarrassed, a little embarrassed that they missed an S here. Maybe it's on purpose. Sending an embarrassed emoji, oops, as Garrosh while he is selected for play will now correctly display the Garrosh, Garrosh embarrassed emoji if the player owns the corresponding emoji pack. That's good. This was this was literally unplayable. Awesome. How do we rate this patch, ladies and gents? Personally, I give it a six and a half out of ten, and I'm ready to try the new Lucio and Thrall Blast. Launch a meteor of ice at an enemy hero. Upon the impact, the meteor deals 100 damage to its target. And 275 damage to enemies in the area. So it's like the reverse of Greetings, Pyroblast. Friend. Which is more damage on the main and residual damage to the around. 